This morning, the Spirit of God came strongly on me to speak to you on this topic which I titled, is not all about you. Life is not all about you. It's all about God. I'm going to tell you a story. In 2007, God raised me up to ordain my first set of you know, sons in the Lord. They were ordained into the ministry by me in 2007. Four of them were ordained. And uh, very, very soon, one of them became a very, very prominent prophet. And what happened when he became a prophet is one of the things I wanted to look at this morning so that you can learn from some of his life. Hallelujah. Good morning. You are welcome to I Prevail with Joseph Adenuga. This morning again, the Spirit of God put a word in my mouth to encourage you, to motivate you, to inspire you so that you can rise above that situation, so that you can prevail over that problem. You see, this is the word of God that causes people to triumph and to conquer and to overcome. And I pray that this morning, the Almighty God himself will raise you up, empower you, invigorate you, and give you the grace to step up and do those things that you desire to do in your life and get those things that you desire to get in your life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Today I just want you to know that life is all about God. It's not just about you. Many people, even in our prayer, only us. You see, yes, we need to pray for ourselves because it is where we are that we can help others to be. But you have to understand one thing. God is raising you up to become great, not just because of you, but because of other people. Because people are God's love. God loves people. You see, people are God's heart. And so when God raises you up, he raises you up to be a blessing to other people. As this son of mine, you know, one of the four people I first ordained in my life and ministry. And very soon this man became a prophet. And um, most of the things that he says comes to pass. And people began to recognize the hand of God upon his life. One day he got to church. And when he got to church, nobody was in church. He was infuriated. You know how it can be when a pastor gets to church in the morning thinking people will be in the church. At the time the service ought to start, there was nobody. Few people were there. And so it was a church of about 45 people. And so he decided in his anger that anybody that comes now, he got a, 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 a small stick or what we call a cane. And he decided all the latecomers will be cane, five strokes of cane. And so the first person came, he said, give me your hand. He said, why must I give you my hand? He said, I want to cane you. He said, for what? He said, because you came to church late. And he gave that one five strokes of cane. That one went to sit down. Another person came, he said, it's a woman. He said, give me your hand. He said, Pastor, why would I give you my hand? I want to cane you. Why would you cane me? Because you came late to church. Ah, Okay. Give that one five strokes of cane. Everybody was being cane. The woman came. He said, give me your hand. He said, give you my hand for what? He said, I want to cane you. Why would you cane me? Because you came to church late. He said, no, I can't take that. You are not my God. You don't know why I'm late. There was a reason why I'm late. So I can't take this cane. He said, no, if you cannot take this cane, then go back home. There is no service for you today. He said, well, I rather prefer to go back home. And so... Some people took the cane, they sat down, other people did not take the cane. This man told me this story himself. Hallelujah. And so, I asked one of the people that took the cane, I said, why did you take the cane? He said, this man is a terrible man. If you offend him, if he can call fire to come and bend you. He said, there was a time somebody offended him and he woke up in the night. He said, Lord, this person has offended me. I want you to discipline this person for me. He said, in the night, fire came, attacked this man, 
burned this man and that fire mysteriously did not touch the wife of this man. And so everybody began to fear this prophet that if he can say one word against you, you are gone. And I called him, I said to him, the grace of God upon your life is not to destroy, is to build up. God did not call you to do these things that you are doing because this thing you are doing is this power that is helping you to destroy people or discipline people or make people to pain and weep. I don't believe this is from God. He said, ah, you are dead, maybe you are jealous, you are jealous. I said, okay, it is well, it is well. Take care of yourself, bye. I left him. But years later, something terrible happened. Let me tell you, no matter the gift you have, no matter the level you operate, God's people in your care or around you are to be helped, respected. And you see, you must contribute to their success, to their joy, not to their pain. No matter what they do for you, Jesus demands that you forgive them, number one. He demands that you pray for them. In fact, when they despitefully use you, you see many people are users. The people that people use the most are the prophets and pastors. People come, they say, pray for me. You pray, something happens. Some of them get breakthroughs. They forget you. It's like they use you. But the Bible says, pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. You see, if you think that you have power and you are going to use it to fight people who offend you, that power you are using to fight them is not the power of God. Because if it is the power of God, it is to build men up. If it is the power of God, it is to raise people from their low level to a high level. It is to make people from pain to gain. When your power does not turn people from pain to gain, I am sorry, that power is likely to be the power of the devil. You see, people will offend you in ministry. People will offend you in life. You see, Jesus Christ, our Lord, says, resist the devil. That's what the word says. I said, he will flee from you. This was spoken through Peter. He said, resist the devil. He will flee from you. But Jesus said, resist not evil. What does that mean? Don't resist people when they do evil to you. Pray for them. They slap you. Pray for them. This is the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, it's a fight the devil. Resist the devil because we are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power. When somebody do you wrong, there is a power that is moving him or her to do you wrong. Fight that power, not that person. You have to recognize that behind every person's action, there is a spirit. Rebook that spirit, not the person. You see, you have to understand the difference between the people that offend you and the power or the spirit that move them to offend you. Deal with that power, not with the people. This is the word this morning. I hope you understand. This is what I'm saying. When people offend you, they do you wrong. There is something that is pushing them. There is a spirit that is backing them. Deal with that spirit. That is what the Bible says. Resist the devil. There is a devil that has motivated them to be against you. He said, resist not evil. That person that is doing that evil against you, just love him and pray for him. But bind that devil that is behind him. Bind that devil that is motivating him. This is the word of God. This is where many people get it wrong. And I don't want you to get it wrong. Love your enemy is what our Lord Jesus Christ says. That's what I'm trying to say yesterday. Some people are asking me questions. I hope I've answered your question. This is the word of God this morning. Think about it. It is well with your soul. Thank you so much. Please rebroadcast this. Get somebody blessed. I know somebody is going to be blessed by hearing this. And I know God is going to bless you for it. Thank you so much. It is well with your soul. Um, consider being a partner. If you want to be our partner, you want to sow to this ministry, you want to give a gift to this ministry, you want to sow a seed, you want to put a sacrifice, just WhatsApp the number. And if you are getting this for the first time, you want me to send it directly to you. 
WhatsApp this number. This is the number. Plus 2774030281. WhatsApp that number say add me or WhatsApp number say seed. And I'll tell you how you can sow your seed. If you add if you want me to add you from tomorrow, you will hear this. This is Joseph Adenuga, your brother, your friend, your pastor, signing out this morning, saying to you, be blessed and remain blessed.